Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how to deploy Strapi application in AWS environment using Terraform. And I'll also demonstrate how a webhook can trigger to our Strapi deployment in an automated fashion. So Strapi is basically a content management platform where you can create content by setting up Strapi application to deploy it on AWS. You will require a AWS based database known as AWS RDS and an EC2 instance. And apart from these two, you will also require AWS S3 bucket. If you are going to deploy all these manually, it might take around one hour, but using this automation using Terraform, it will be done in few minutes. So let me walk you through how this whole deployment is going to be. On the left hand side, you can see my Terraform code files. And in this diagram, you can see we are going to run Terraform apply command to apply this code. And this will provision all our infrastructure required for Strapi. As you are already aware, Terraform is a infrastructure provisioning tool. So it is going to create all the resources required for Strapi deployment. So when we run Terraform apply, it's going to create AWS RDS instance and we will be using Postgres. So it's going to create a Postgres database and then it's going to create an AWS EC2 instance and also an S3 bucket. Once these resources are created, it's going to copy all the server configuration and deployment script into the EC2 instance. All these scripts are present under this scripts folder. Don't worry, I'll walk you through all the scripts and the Terraform code. So this whole part will be infrastructure provisioning part. And once this is done, we can have a webhook. So whenever a developer commits any commit to GitHub, a webhook will be triggered and it will rebuild and redeploy the scripts present in the EC2 server. This part will be known as continuous integration and continuous delivery. Now let us go through the GitHub code. The GitHub code is present in Apache DevOps as a repository Strapi deployment automation. Here we have all the Terraform code as .tf files and we have all the scripts under scripts folder. This is our key pair file. So this is gonna create AWS key pair and then we have a file providers.tf in which we are providing all the required providers. For example, we require AWS GitHub as provider. So we are specifying what version we require for these. So all these information are present in providers.tf file. Then it's going to create the AWS RDS instance, which is present in AWS RDS.tf file. So this is the definition of RDS resource and we are giving it a name Strapi. And the DB name is going to be Strapi DB and it's going to be a micro instance because this is just a demo and we are just allocating a small amount of disk and then we, we are saying we are going to use Postgres. Then we are specifying username and password using variable and it will be publicly accessible just because for the demo otherwise for production purpose it is not recommended to have your database instances publicly accessible. And then we are just putting all the database details obtained by this RDS resource into RDS details.json file, which is under output. Then it's going to create instance and we have all the instance detail here. We are going to use Ubuntu based AMI and then all the details will come from variable like image name, instance type, private key path and the provisional file will be under scripts and the destination will be home ubuntu.scripts and the config file will be copied to slash home slash ubuntu.config and then we are making all these executable using chmod plus x and it's gonna copy the pullcode.asset script as well using the get username and password and then we are also putting the environment file Finally, once this instance is created, we are again saving the details of this instance into instance detail.json file. Similarly, S3 bucket will also be created and this is the code to create the S3 resource. We are giving tags, name, bucket name and we are storing again all the details to S3 details.json file. So all these are basic building blocks of Terraform. So just in case, if you have any confusion understanding any of the Terraform code, you can also go through Terraform documentation. We are not going to cover line by line coverage, but I'm giving you a basic understanding of how the code looks like. And this is config details.tf. So basically this is going to save output and deploy. 
and this is saying like this particular terraform code depends on all these resources so first it's going to create the db instance and then instance and s3 bucket and then it is specifying the connection details so it can copy the output file in ec2 instance and then it will execute all those scripts like it will set the environment.asset script it will do the node setup then and then it will deploy strapi and then it will set up nginx then this file is creating the security group so security groups are like firewall rules in aws and we are specifying like we are allowing the ingress on port 5432 from everywhere then this input where.tf file has all the variables declared then we have this webhook.tf file it is going to create a webhook we are giving it a name strapi and then we are specifying on which repository we want to have it on and specifying the event that means on any push this webhook should be triggered and then we are specifying the url the webhook secret and we are specifying the ssh connection to the instance details by specifying private key file user and the public ip and then it's gonna execute webhook.sh script and then we are saying that this resource depends on this particular terraform code execution so this is all about terraform code now let's walk through the scripts folder so it has config environment.py file this is a python script so this script will set the environment it will set the database host database port instance details region everything by opening all the json file that we will populate by running the terraform code and then we have deploy strapi.sh this is exporting node to the path variable and then doing npm install and then setting environment to production and then starting pm to server we also have nginx setup.sh file which is simply installing nginx and changing required permissions and then creating a simple nginx configuration file which will be listening on port 80 and it will proxy all the requests to the pm2 server which will be running on local host 1337 port and then it is simply restarting nginx we also have node setup because node is required so we are going to install node and pm2 server using this script so this is simply installing of these then we have pull code.sh which is going to clone the whole repository and we have set env.sh which is going to execute the python file config env.py then we have webhook script so basically it's creating a webhook.js file with this content so this is what the webhook.js looks like so it's gonna cd into the home directory and then it will go inside this and it will restart the pm2 and it's also creating a webhook.service file in systemd so it will be running as a service so these are the major files that are required to do the automation and we have understood the major code that is required for this automation you can find the whole code on our github repository you can find the link in the description now let's see the actual demo so first of all we are going to build the project locally so these are the project files and here i'm going to build it using the command npm run develop so it is building the project okay it has generated all the required files and started it so as you can see it is running on localhost 1337 port and this is the admin page now we need to create a user to get started so let's give some name password and click on let's start so this is the main dashboard after signing up we can start creating our content from here but creating the content is not the goal here we need to automate this deployment on aws so let's now deploy it which is strapi automation let's run the terraform plan command and see what all resources it is going to create so as you can see it is going to create 13 resources in aws and it has given all the details so if you are sure about what you are going to create through this because this may cost you a bit depending on the resource you are creating 
now let us go ahead and run terraform apply command because now we actually want to create it so run terraform apply and use the flag auto approve because it will prompt you whether you want to continue by creating the resource or not so if you apply this option it is not going to ask it will just go ahead and create the resources so as you can see it has already started creating all the resources for us i'm just fast forwarding the video because it's going to take time because it will create all the resources one by one so as you can see it's creating all the resources okay all the resources have been created and it has given us the output of rds s3 bucket and instance detail like the endpoint required for database instance its host name database name port and username and for the bucket we have got the arn bucket name region and for instance we now know the instance id private ip and public ip so let's copy the public ip and try to access the dashboard because as per our automation it must have set up the nginx and started pm2 server and we should be able to access strapi dashboard on public ip over port 80 as you can see this was our local setup on local host now we are going to open a new tab and try to hit the public ip of instance so as you can see this is production environment and the service is running successfully now put slash admin to see the admin panel As we did last time let's put all the details again but this time for the production environment and let's continue so you can see the dashboard is up and running we have successfully set up the strapi application on aws using automation let's see if the instance is also created let's refresh this and as you can see the instance is also there now let's go to rds and see if it is present Okay, we have one database instance and as you can see it is up and running let's see the bucket go to s3 and the s3 bucket is also there cool so all these resources have been created through terraform within few minutes now let's connect to the ec2 instance and see how long the pm2 server is running because we are going to push a commit and see if it is getting deployed automatically using webhook or not so we are on EC2 instance. Let's go inside Strapi app and here you can see all the files are present. Now to check how long the application is running, we are using PM2 server so we can use a command PM2 status. So you can see the uptime is 11 minute. This means PM2 server is running since 11 minute. So if we create a file and just do a push, it's gonna trigger the webhook and it will redeploy the whole application. And if it redeploys the application, the uptime should be few seconds ago. So let's see. So this is my local machine. And here I'm going to create demo.txt file. And then I will simply add it and do the commit and then push. Great, now let's push it. Now this must have triggered the automation. The uptime was 11 minutes before and now it should be few seconds ago. So let's run the PM to status command again and see what's the uptime now. So as you can see the uptime is 18 seconds ago. This means the webhook has worked fine and it has triggered the deployment again as soon as we push the code or made any changes. So this is all for this demo.